Hello there, I'm Josh from Cools Paranormal, and welcome to my inner sanctum. I'm here to talk to you about our new series, Cools Fun Facts. This is where we talk about a topic that you, the fans, have chosen. Today we have a special guest. We have Keegan Cool with us. He is our lead investigator and one of our co-founders. Hey, Hello, what's Keegan. up, everybody? Hope you guys are doing good. Was well, this little guy here, the uh, orangutan. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Cool's Fun Facts. Today we're going to be covering the Lafayette Vampire. And now, you would say Lafayette Vampire? That sounds like a Colorado paranormal story almost everyone should know of. And I would say, it's really not. As someone that lives in Colorado, to be fair, I didn't hear about this story until I read the book Weird Colorado, your travel guide to Colorado's local legends and best-kept secrets. This has a whole two pages on the Lafayette Vampire, and that's really where we got our idea. And it's kind of funny, because after going up and filming this episode up here, we've actually seen the Lafayette Vampire story circulating on Facebook. And so I was like, well, that's kind of interesting, because I, I really never heard about it until I read this book. Now, is it an actual vampire? Well... No. Local legends say that Fedor Theodor Kalava was born in Transylvania and died in 1918, and he's the one buried with the headstone. The local legend also says the tree growing directly below it actually grew from the stake that pierced his heart to kill him. But what is the actual truth? Is he a vampire? As mentioned earlier, the overwhelmingly answer is no and there's actually more than one person buried and you can even see it on the headstone so besides theodore galava who was 43 at the time of his death in december 1918 there is also john trandifer who's 27 who was born in transylvania now called romania so they both actually died from the flu uh, Theodore died shortly after a relapse of influenza, and then John died because of the Spanish flu, which was a very large outbreak, killing vast amount of people in 1918. And that's another reason that kind of ties in, is we're kind of reliving that with the pandemic today. I think when we visited it, the people in our group were kind of surprised by the look of the headstone. Even to this day, it's clearly, it looks less proper than the other ones, almost like it was homemade. And it is sort of hard to make out, and so a lot of it gets lost in translation. So is there any other strange occurrences at this cemetery? Well, people do say they hear disembodied voices, lights, and even apparitions or being beaten up by an unseen assailant, which they attribute to the vampire. And much like we concluded at Memon Ridge in Castle Rock, Colorado, the disembodied voices are probably because it's in an area that's pretty built up. There's a lot of people around and voice can travel. And so more than likely, that's what these voices are coming from. Uh, the lights and maybe the apparition, it's a little bit harder to debunk. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen, though a lot of people going into cemeteries automatically have this mindset of a really really creepy place obviously it's a place full of dead bodies but to a lot of people they come here to visit loved ones and that's why as a group we've chosen never to investigate at cemeteries i just personally don't feel it's proper and i feel like it could have ramifications i mean just think you're investigating somewhere and you disturb a spirit that was happily at rest. And now that spirit is trapped there for eternity. That would just be a terrible thing to happen. Brendan found the vampire grave. Yeah. He's gonna walk over the vampire. Oh, so what do you think, Dad, vampire or just unfortunate soul? Unfortunate soul. Unfortunate soul. Unfortunate soul. Brendan, what about you? Vampire or unfortunate soul? Daddy! 
Brendan doesn't know. So this was a pretty interesting stop for us to come check out. And while there's not a lot of history, there's a lot of legend. And if you ask anyone that lives in Lafayette, Colorado, they will tell you, as a kid, they were creeped out and terrified of the legend of the Lafayette Vampire. And today, like I said earlier in the video, the Lafayette Vampire, be it Theodore Glava or John Tyrannifer, is not forgotten. Facebook posts circulate, especially around the Halloween season, and different tributes or trinkets show up around his grave this time of year. Never underestimate the allure of a local legend. We also decided to go check out the gravesite of Tom Horn, a cowboy who was hanged in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and later buried in Boulder, Colorado. And so we drove our way up to Boulder. Tom Horn's story is interesting, as he was hung on his 43rd birthday in Cheyenne, Wyoming, accused of murder of a 14-year-old Willie Nickel. Now, some historians believe it might have been accidental. And if you want to hear more about his story, let us know in the comments below, and perhaps we'll cover it in an upcoming Extra Credit episode. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you want to see more Cool's Fun Facts, please click that link to your left. Check out that video about the Mokele Abembe, a living dinosaur. If you want to see more from us here at Cool's Paranormal, then click the video on your right. And continue Halloween week and watch our Throwback Thursday episode of our 2018-19 Halloween special. And as always, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe.